Hello, darlings. You've all heard of Marilyn Monroe. Darlings, I'm Cognac Willa Lane and I am here with artist Basha Goldsmith and we are here at the Carter Burdens Gallery, Art Gallery, right here on 28th Street in Manhattan and she's going to tell my audience a little bit about, I, I, tell my audience about all the fabulous paintings that you have here at the Art Gallery. How many I, paintings do you have? I have five. It's two minutes. Now, tell my audience about what we're seeing here. What is this all about? Well, these are mainly landscapes that are, I'm trying to make them more and more abstract. Welcome back, darlings. I'm Cognac Willa Lane, and we are here at the Carter Burton Art Gallery on 28th Street, and I'm here with this fabulous artist who is displaying some magnificent pieces of art, Ms. Marilyn Church. She's a wonderful artist and she has won many awards and received many honorary achievement uh, uh, acknowledgments. And she is here to talk about her fabulous paintings here at the gallery. Now, how many pieces are we looking at right now here in the gallery? Five in the gallery tonight, all rather large pieces. Tell my audience, can you explain? I, I was reading a little bit about you. You used to be a court artist. Yes, I still do some courtroom work, but my focus these days is in my paintings. But I, for 40, over 40 years, I covered all the big cases. All the years. really, really wild cases. Right, can like you John Gotti and Robert Chambers and Bernie Madoff and Margaret... Um, Martha Stewart, I don't know, you name it, and I stopped. I started to slow down around 2010. And now so, you do these magnificent pieces. I have always painted at the same time, but I, it's, it's my total focus now. now. How did you get into court art? Uh, Photo. Had an, uh, Tell my audience the story behind that. Yeah, I had a, a friend who was uh, covering a big case in Queens. A district attorney was accused in a Ponzi scheme. And he said, you know, there's these TV artists sitting there. Did you ever think of that? And at that time, I was doing fashion illustration. Oh, so you, I read a little bit, too, about that. You were into fashion as well. Yes, and, and actually, I was getting bored with fashion. And court cases sound so dramatic. Fascinating. fascinating. That's fascinating. Yes. I, you, when, you, when you were painting these famous people that were on trial, did you feel in your soul that they were guilty or innocent when you were capturing their expressions? Well, that's a good question. Yes, it's. I really try to be objective and to just portray what I saw, not what I was feeling so much. Uh, but it's hard to be totally objective. So, I mean, I remember one trial when the attorney came over to me and said, "My client, who was he, he was." Um, the uh, terrorist who blew up the first World Trade Center trial, this is. And he said, my client objects to how you're portraying him. He looks like a terrorist. And but he is a terrorist. <laughs> exactly, yes. exactly. And we were even terrorized sitting in that courtroom, feeling the audience uh, that came and supported him. 
So, you know, it was really terrorizing for us looking at him. So I'm sure some, some of that got in the drawing. What about Martha Stewart? Did you think she was innocent well, or guilty? Martha Stewart was very removed and cool. And yeah, I would think so. She used to annoy us because she had this hair that would always flop in her eyes and she used it to cover herself up so she wouldn't be uh, drawn by the artist. She wasn't exactly welcoming to us. And I can understand that because why should she be? Right. Absolutely. You know, I met Martha Stewart many years ago. I, did, I didn't interview her. I've interviewed many famous people, but I never got to interview her. But she loved my costume because I went to the Bette Midler Halloween, Halloween event, and she loved my costume. She was taking pictures of me. I should have been taking pictures of her, but she was taking pictures of me because she loved the way I looked at my costume. Isn't that funny? Now, what about Bernie Madoff? He must have been a character to, to well, I mean, it was so that was a h awful, awful uh, crime, and it was just so, I mean, the whole family suffered from that. The poor son even killed himself. It was a, really and a travesty and a tragedy. Yes, and that's what we felt as we listened to him pleading guilty, but... The people who had been harmed were all in the audience, you know, speaking, hoping he would get a very large sentence, which he did. But it, it, it was very moving listening to everybody. What was the most um, challenging thing that you did in the courtroom? What, what was the most challenging piece of work that you've ever done in the courtroom? I think probably the most challenging was the Central Park Five. Why is that? Well, because they were young, uh, and they, you know that they were not very educated or didn't come from homes where uh, they had a lot of support, where they could get the best lawyers. That wasn't going on, and they, and they were up against this trial that had so much heavy support in the media and so much money being spent on making money from their story that uh, the mothers of the mothers are pleading their case to me saying don't draw my son uh, you know he's innocent please and it was heart wrenching. The whole I can thing imagine. I can imagine. The most difficult. And a lot of these cases actually are hard for me to step back at night. I can, you know, it's hard for me to get them out of my mind a lot of times. And the great thing is to be able to get to my painting where. Now that it's I don't so much, have to. It's so much lighter. It's so much more. Well, I, could, I could see why this is a, it's like a different thing here. This is more, you know, how you feel and you want to emulate something that's beautiful. Right. And a lot of it is based on the human emotions that I couldn't express in court because they're my reactions personally. And I, as I said, I was always trying to be journalistically accurate. So this is a chance to look at uh, deeper. Like this painting is called Secrets of Life. Yes, explain to my audience about what this, what this is about. Well, it's about, it's based on dreams that I had recurring dreams of escaping from some of the dark thoughts that these trials brought up in me. So um, if you could show the painting a little bit, uh, it's, it's based on this figure being more grounded and feeling constrained, and this, this figure going up and off in space and elevating and go, being free of all the things that were entrapping her psyche that she's heard. And, and a lot of my paintings are, are based on getting free of these images. I see, I see. How many years 
come a little closer, Joe. Come closer. Don't worry. We do. We do. Uh, okay. I do a voiceover. We're going to show you a painting in full, so right. you don't have to worry about that. Okay. Tell my audience a little bit more about why you really wanted to be an artist. Oh my God, I never thought of being anything else. Um, all my life, I love drawing. I love the smell of crayons from a young child. I loved creating things on paper, and I always. It was the only attention I got. I was one of five children, and nobody paid much attention except for a drawing I did. Well, you do amazing work. Your artwork is just gorgeous, really Thank gorgeous. You so much. I'm really blown away by, by every single thing I'm seeing here tonight at the Carter Burden Gallery, Art Gallery here on 28th Street. You do a, a tremendous job. Do you, uh, what's next for you now? What would you like to do next? Is there something you want to, uh, is there another challenge you want to conquer? No, I just want to go on with my painting. That's my big challenge. And um, stay with it. And I feel energized by my painting. I feel wonderful. I feel wonderful being in this room and seeing people, seeing them all together in one place. And, uh, it makes me only want to get back to painting very quickly. Fabulous. Where is your next exhibit going to be besides here? Well, I'm also showing right now at the Islip Museum. Oh, Islip. That's by me. I live in Long Island. Oh, well, great. Well, I'd, I'd love, love to go. see that. Okay. It's there right now until February. It's there until February 15th. Islip. The Islip Museum. Tell me, can you tell my audience the address? Um, I know it's Irish Lane in East Islip. Fabulous. Now, I have to ask you, Marilyn, do you have a website that we yes. can go to to find oh, out more please. information about your beautiful yes. art? MarilynChurch.com. That's pretty easy. It's my name, MarilynChurch.com. You're gorgeous, Marilyn. Thank you so much. For your pleasure. Your beautiful artwork, and we'll be back in a moment, darling, some more interviews right here at the Carter Burden Art Gallery on 28th Street in Manhattan. Pink Champagne Kisses. I was diagnosed in 2008. 2006. 2010. I was 32. I was 30. I was only 28 years old when I found out I had breast cancer. Last year, nearly 200,000 women in the United States were diagnosed with breast cancer. That means a woman in the U.S. is told she has breast cancer every two minutes. This video is two minutes long. Every woman on the planet is at risk for breast cancer. And that risk only increases if someone in your family has been diagnosed. So get checked. Check yourself. Perform routine breast exams at least once a month. It's easy, you can do it in the shower. If something doesn't feel right, it's up to you to find out what's wrong. Tell your doctor about any lumps or any unusual skin irritation, itching or pain. Get regular mammograms starting by at least age 40 and every year after that. Breast cancer may not be preventable, but knowing the facts and knowing your body will increase your chances of finding any cancer early. Early detection means it's easier to treat. These are your sisters we're talking about. Mothers, daughters, friends, neighbors. Please, stay aware. Stay healthy. Stay alive. I survived breast cancer. I survived breast cancer. Sobreviví cancer en los senos. I survived breast cancer. I am still fighting breast cancer. Talk to your doctor. Get regular mammograms. And perform routine self-exams. It's as easy as taking a shower. It started out like a totally normal day. Objection deadline to the third line after survey. Oh, honey, for, for when you are, you always use the verb. That's the heart. What are you doing down there? Did you finish your breakfast? Ow. Whew. Don't hit your brother. <laughs> I 
it. You have to eat something. Here. Okay, five minutes to carpool. Where's my coffee? Mm. You okay, Mom? Oh, I'm fine. Sandwich orders. What do you want? Almond butter and jelly. Spaghetti. Oh, you sure you're okay? I'm fine, sweetie. I am so late. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Hey, honey. You okay? Uh, yeah, I'm fine. You sure? Oh, yeah. Here. Acai, my favorite. See you guys later. Okay. Where are your shoes? Put your shoes back on, please. You know, go help your sister. We're going in three minutes. Oh, my God, what am I doing? I forgot to cut off the crust. Voila, shoes on, potty if you need it. Honey, get your sister. Okay, get your shoes. Nobody move! I'm getting a dustpan. Oh. Mom! Mm. I think you're having a heart attack. Honey, do I look like the type of person who has a heart attack? <laughs> I'm just gonna sit down. <sighs> totally fine. Don't forget to wear the high socks with the shin guards. Forget about the shin guards, Mom. <gasps> Come on, Mrs. Onerdonk is not gonna wait. to bother you. <laughs> I think I might be having a little heart attack. <laughs> Nothing really, just some nausea, tightening of the jaw, dizziness, shortness of breath, muscle pain, achiness, this terrible pressure in my chest. Oh, really? They can be here in how long? <gasps> Two minutes. Can you make it 10? I thought I had gas. Turns out, I was having a heart attack. Heart disease is the number one killer of American women. So now I take care of my heart and I tell the women in my life to do the same. Sounds great, by the way. That's nice, sweetie, but that's not my heart. That is. Make it your mission to save your life and the lives of the women you love. Find out more from the American Heart Association at goredforwomen.org. Darlings, I'm Cognac with Elaine, and we are here in Chelsea for a very important exhibition of art. And I'm standing with one of the artists, and he's going to introduce himself and tell us all about his piece of art that he is showing here at this wonderful gallery. Introduce yourself to the camera. Okay, hi, I'm Walter Brown. I'm an artist, and I work with recyclable material. And, this, and is, this is your piece of work, right? yes. your piece of art, right? Yes. This Tell my audience about this piece of art that you've captured the image. This is a plastic bag filled with paint and, and then mounted on a light box. So the actual plastic bag is there. I open the bag, put in the paint, squish it around from the outside, and then mount it on the light box so it has that backlit light showing all the fine detail um, that you can get with this technique. Well, what inspired you to create such a piece of art? Well, I really care deeply about our planet and all the plastic waste that's everywhere now. And I just one day asked myself, what would happen if I put paint inside the bag? And this is what happened. It's unbelievable. Uh, thank you very much. It's gorgeous. It has like a, I don't know, I mean, I'm just looking at it 
as not somebody that's an expert in art, but it sort of reminds me of the autumn, of fall. Well, that's right. That's exactly what I, I have a series of four, which are the four seasons. And this one is like the late summer, early fall. That's what it looks like. Because it's, it's mostly green with hints of orange coming in. Gorgeous. Thank now, you. Now, how many pieces of art do you have here? Do you have, is this your only piece or do you have others? In this show, this is my only piece. Now, tell my audience... Um, are you, where are you going to be exhibiting next? Well, I'm lining up some, it's January, I'm lining up some things for the year, but I'm, um, I usually show uh, in Miami during Art Basel Week. I love that. At the I Art love Fair. Yes. And <clears throat> I also show at the other art fair in New York, and um, possibly the Volta Art Fair that's coming up. How wonderful. Now, if we want to learn more information about you as an, a fabulous artist, where can we go? Do you have a website? I do, but the best place is Instagram, where I'm uh, Walter Brown 99 Walter, spell it. <coughs> Walter Brown, W-A-L-T-E-R, Brown, like the color, B-R-O-W-N, 99. Gorgeous. Thank Give me you. a kiss, Walter. Mm. Mm. And we'll be back, darlings, with more interviews right here at this fabulous art gallery. Tell me what's the name of the gallery. This is the Atlantic Gallery, and it's a juried show. Uh, and how long is it going to be going on? It's going to be on until, it's on until January 25th. So, fabulous. Thank you. Yes. One I'm, more time, the Instagram page. Walter Brown 99 And uh, come see the show here while it's here, if you can. Fabulous. Thank you. I love you, darling. Give me Thank you. We'll be back in a moment, darlings. More interviews coming up right here at the Atlantic Gallery. Keep watching. Big champagne kisses. several pieces at a time so things over the month over the year can keep growing and I'm getting much more sculptural now and you can see on the other piece around the corner it is taking off into more of a sculpture and less book like but the reason I call it like a sculpture book is that when I start my piece after I do all my prints there's a spine and everything is connected to that that spine. And it's the spine of the book, that's like the spine of a body. So I kind of work off of that. And conceptually, I'm working with my ideas of um, the environment, and things I find, things I see, and things I imagine. And some of it's from history, you know, researching areas um, and, and where I find the soil, where I find sand, things that I collect. And then taking that and building from the history and then moving on to present time, from the past to the present. And then the final piece becomes the future and my imagination of what 
um, a future mystery world may look like. So that's basically it, but um, it's fun. <laughs> I'm Cognac with Elaine, and we are here at this fabulous gallery in Chelsea on 28th Street. And I'm here with the artist, and she's going to explain what this piece of art is all about behind us. We're going to get some video of that, but she's going to introduce herself and tell us what this is all about. Okay, hi. I'm Susan Rostow, and this is my sculptural book piece. And um, my background is in printmaking and book arts, and then it developed into sculpture. And so you can see the work has um, pages, and it's very um, investigative of materials. And I use um, sand, and I mix it into my ink and printmaking, and I combine it so that it has a feeling of being brought out from the earth rather than being made I want it to feel like it grew or it was dug out of the earth so it has a mystery behind it and uh, the viewer can kind of give their own imagination to what it's actually about. How fascinating! Now is this your first time here at the Atlantic Gallery 2020? Droid exp exhibition, is this your first time? It's the first time I've been um, exhibiting my work here, but it's the may, I've been here many times to see other exhibitions. Fascinating. If we want to learn more about your art, uh, do you have a website? Susan Rostow. Spell it, spell it. S-U-S-A-N-R-O-S-T-O-W dot com. Gorgeous. Susan Rostow. Well, your work is just gorgeous. Thank you so much. Thank you. And you're awesome. I love the way you look. Thank you. <laughs> we'll be back, darlings, with more interviews right here in Chelsea, right here at this fabulous art crawl. Keep watching. More interviews coming up with Champagne Kisses. Hello, darlings. You've all heard of Marilyn Monroe. Some of you know Bridget Fardell. dressed to impress one of a kind girl I was brought into this world wrapped up in pearls I love to mingle though my husband reminds me I'm not single I meet and greet both the famous and the elite I ride in limousines drinking the finest champagne wearing fur dazzling diamond jewelry a girl can't complain I live in upscale life, dining in the finest restaurants, eating the best caviar for free. And no matter how much I eat cognac, ooh, ooh, I sip cognac, ooh, ooh, ooh. This has been a Crybaby Productions, darlings.